When it comes to cooling down a PC, many enthusiasts and gamers want to make sure that they've got some serious flow going on. And no, of course, I'm not talking about your questionable hairstyle, but about airflow. But unlike buying, say, a ceiling fan, picking the biggest, fastest spinning computer fan you can find is not always the best solution. Don't get me wrong. Fan sizes and RPMs, how fast they spin, are important. But an element of fan design often overlooked by novice builders is whether the fan is optimized for high airflow or high static pressure. But what does that mean? I mean, can't any fan provide decent airflow if it spins fast enough? Well, actually, different fan blades are engineered to move air in different ways. Fans marked high airflow have one objective in mind, to move as much air as possible through an open opening. You might see the marketing for a high airflow fan focus on its CFM rating, which stands for cubic feet per minute. Since a cubic foot is a measure of volume, then this is indicative of the actual amount of air that the fan can either intake or exhaust, or <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, they're both going to be about the same. On the other side of the coin are high static pressure fans. Static pressure is actually a concept in fluid dynamics, but don't worry too much. You don't need a degree in physics to understand how this relates to cooling down your rig. Simply put, high static pressure fans are better at forcing air harder through small spaces. They may not move the same volume of air as a high airflow fan if they were both in sitting on a desk with nothing to push through, but they typically blow air, a little bit of air, more strongly. So when exactly do you want to pick one over the other? Well, as a general rule, high airflow fans are better suited to be used as case fans. PC cases tend to be relatively open inside. That is assuming you didn't cram a bunch of wiring into the front of it or like Snoopy or something. Meaning that being able to move lots of air at once can result in more effective cooling. By contrast, static pressure fans typically find their homes on things like heat sinks or cooling radiators. Cooling components like these often have lots of metal fins that are used to increase the surface area of the device that needs to be cooled and to dissipate heat. So to cool off the heat sink properly, air needs to move through these fins with a sufficient amount of force. In this situation, to make sure that the amount of air moving through your heatsink is high enough, you've got to have high static pressure. But that doesn't mean that static pressure fans are a one-trick pony. In fact, they can often be a good choice for chassis fans if you've got some kind of an obstruction that might hinder airflow otherwise. For example, many cases have hard drive cages directly behind the front intake fan. So in this situation, a static pressure fan can be more effective at getting the air through these small gaps. They can also be useful if you have a case with very narrow vents on the front or a fan filter that's designed to filter the dust out of the air, but is of course going to obstruct airflow. Since many radiators and CPU heatsinks come with fans pre-installed, it's a good idea to ensure that they're high static pressure if you want to get the best performance possible. Despite the fact that these fans are better for CPU cooling, some manufacturers stick with whatever standard airflow focused fan for whatever reason. So do your homework so you're getting the best performance possible out of your new cooling solution. After all, there's nothing quite like the feeling of seeing your temperature stay low after hours and hours of gaming. That is assuming you didn't build your computer into the side of an igloo. You got a whole other set of issues. Speaking of igloos, <laughs> Braintree! Their code for easy online payments means if you're building a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, you're going to want to check it out. I mean, the payments API is an extremely important aspect of any successful app. Well, maybe not a successful app. I mean, Flappy Bird was technically a successful app if we look at it in terms of downloads. But if you want to get paid, then it's a very good idea. The Braintree V.0 SDK is one amazingly simple integration that gives you every way to pay. I mean, 
we're talking Android Pay, Apple Pay, PayPal, Venmo, credit cards, even Bitcoin. And if something new pops up, Braintree's going to be figuring out how to support that too. They're used by Uber, Airbnb, and GitHub, so they are scalable. And integrating it into your app is as simple as inserting a few lines of code. And if you have trouble, they will help you out, by the way. So try out the sandbox, learn more about Braintree, and get your first $50,000 in transactions fee free over at braintreepayments.com slash techwiki linked in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked this video, hit that like button. But if you disliked it, then you can hit the like button anyway. Come on. Let's see if it works. If I tell people to do it, will they do it? Probably not. Also, you can check out our other channels. We've got some great videos over on Channel Super Fun lately. Don't miss those. Leave a comment below if you have suggestions for future videos. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff for more videos just like this one. Thank you. Good throw. Ah, oh, nice. Glow-in-the-dark frisbee. What's he going to do with it? We don't know.